I think everyone agrees that the challenges we need for the future uh, are pretty substantial. Uh, whatever government gets elected next year in the general election, uh, we're going to face another period of financial restraint. The leadership of the civil service, both today's leadership and the new generations of leadership that are coming through, uh, need to be fostering a different kind of culture, much more open to people coming in from outside, much more receptive to experience from outside, much more challenging, much less deferential and more open to innovation. I think the challenges that leaders need to deal with are probably very similar whether you're in the civil service or anywhere else in industry. They are really all about delivering to higher expectations of customers or citizens, your users, whoever they are, coping with the introduction of new technology which is happening right across the industry and across the civil service to help us to deliver more effectively for people. And in the end, making sure that we keep stuff on track whilst everything around us is changing, that we stay focused on the goal and we continue to focus on real delivery. With the use of tablets and iPads and iPhones and Blackberries, I don't think we're in a situation anymore where productivity is measured by what I see. Whether you're the civil service or the private sector, I really don't believe it makes any difference because the principle of both organisations is we manage people to achieve tasks and objectives that we want output on. The big opportunity facing civil service leadership is after some very big changes in the last four years, and unappreciated widely by the public, um, big reductions in numbers of staff, big restructuring in most departments. There's now, I think, an appetite amongst all servants at all levels for, for change in models of operation and of delivery, to move to a new way of working. But it again requires clarity of leadership, clarity and trust with ministers as well in the way forward. The way to inspire others in terms of making a difference is to start with being very clear about what it is you want to achieve. What we're facing is an environment where we still want the same things, but how we do things have to be done very differently. And if you can hold on with staff to that vision, that long-term aim, and actually get them on side with that, then the way that you do things in a different way can be altered. The message I've been giving to people in NHS England and around the health service is that we've got to think like a patient and act like a taxpayer. And it's that double perspective, the people we serve, and the people who are funding our services that I think has got to be at the heart of what we as public service leaders pay attention to in everything that we do. Communication is critical. I think being able to engage with anyone in your organisation from the boardroom to the shop floor in a way that they get it. They get what you're about and what you're trying to achieve. Don't get trapped uh, in the in a courtyard of your building do engage with others because actually it's the views and ideas of others which continually sort of nourish your agenda and your thinking. The challenges I think leaders need to overcome in order to be successful are for me quite simple. It's taking the really, really difficult decisions, being particularly decisive in everything you do, um, being really honest and really true to yourself in everything you do as well. It's very tough uh, because it's easier to tell less than the whole truth to be acceptable and pleasing. Sometimes it's very difficult to tell the whole truth and get the right decision made. The sign of a great leader, I believe, is to be authentic. I've always found that inspiring people is about getting to work together as a team. I've always had one phrase which I said because I was a chief executive it didn't mean I had exclusivity of good ideas. Teams work better if one plus one is working together to equal more than two. What people want is they want direction. What people want is they want action. What people want is to know where they're going to go. So the job of leaders is to plant flags but the job of teams is to get leaders there. I think a successful leader in any age uh, sets a clear direction, appoints outstanding people and keeps calm. If you do those three things, then broadly what you want will happen. I think you've got to recognise that we work for the government today, so you've got to have a good relationship with ministers. Um, ultimately, I think you've got to meet those expectations. Those expectations are high. I think they're rightly high. I think it's motivating that they're high. Um, I think, you know, at its best, government services, you know, it's a great career to be in, it's a really fascinating career. I've had a pretty tough year, I wouldn't have missed it for the world.